What's good, podcast world? What's good, YouTube? Sixers are in trouble. I need a top five. Man, let's get into best of the week, man. What's good, podcast world? What's good, YouTube? Back for another episode of Charge to the Game Sports Podcast. As you can see, I'm joined by Big Z, an NBA veteran, current assistant head coach of the Dallas Mavericks, uh, Daryl Armstrong, is joining us. Uh, before we hop into it, fellas, uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, and then again, we're on all major platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. But um, yeah, man, the big homie's joining us today. So, Daryl, man, what's going on, bro? Nothing, nothing. Um, just sitting in, just finished watching um, the Dallas Mavericks uh, finish playing the Denver Nuggets, and we lost again. Second game in a row, we lost in overtime. And um, I, I just saw the the, the uh, summer league head coach just text me and said, "Oh boy," <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you know. Um, but our guys competed. Um, the first game we played is just we, we didn't play well. But the, the last two games they don't play, they really competed and lost in overtime twice. Yeah, yeah. I mean you can't. I mean you can't really fault these guys. They, they battle and they fight, man. I was watching a little bit of the game close to the end. Looked like it seemed like they had the lead in the fourth, and then they just came back a little bit. You know. Yeah, and but, then we also playing with without without one of our uh, draft picks, uh, mm -hmm. Tyrell yeah. Terry. Um, who's our score shooter for us? And so, I mean, you know, for for our guys, it's still good to see them guys battle. And that's all. That, that's all that counts. You know, battle and play hard. And uh, that's what they've done the last two games. Yeah, yeah, they definitely have, man. So, bro, let's let's talk a little bit about your early life, man. So, where did you grow up, man? Tell the people where you're from, man, and uh, tell us about like, did you play any other sports growing up, man? I grew up in a manger, just like Jesus. <laughs> 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 nah, um, I grew up in Gastonia, North Carolina, right outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I grew up watching two guys, um, James Worthy and Sleepy Floor, who played in the NBA from my hometown. Uh, okay. Me and James Worthy, we went to the same high school. Uh, I used to go to the Boys and Girls Club, and that's where I always used to see James Worthy. Uh, didn't like basketball at that time. Never really played it. If I really? did, it was just fun for pickup. Yeah. Um, wow. You know, for me, for me, my 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 love and still love was uh, first love is uh, football. You know, I played oh, football. Oh my god! For Thirteen, fourteen years, um, and then um, my senior year, we got put out of the state semifinal game, and um, so I. The team had already tried. It had, I'm sorry, the team had already been playing games, uh, like five or six games, and they let guys come off the football team and try out. And that was my first time they were trying out my senior year, and I ended up making the team. Uh, never forget uh, my head coach, uh, Joe Shepard, uh, who, who went to University of North Carolina, who coached under, which is crazy, who coached under um, – uh, what's the head coach who just, who just resigned uh, – and uh, what's what school? Uh, University of North Carolina. I'm getting, I'm, uh, I'm getting Roy old. Williams. Roy yeah, Williams. Roy Williams. I'm, yep. okay, son, I'm getting old, man. I can't remember names. <laughs> I old, that's why I don't mess with old people. Now. I don't mess with old people. <laughs> I, I, I understand it now. So, uh, he was, he was. It was crazy. I learned a lot. Um, I got inducted into um, the Gastonia uh, Hall of Fame at my hometown, and I learned a lot that night. Um, where Joe Shepard, who's my head coach for high school, coached under Roy Williams, who coached the JV team at the University of North Carolina at that time, before oh, wow. he went to Kansas. So, you know, a lot of things made sense. The stuff that he would he would do with, do with us in practice, I mean, because that's when I learned how to take a charge. All the charges you see me taking <laughs> games, that came, that came from Joe Shepard and the North Carolina type of stuff, you know, things they do on defense. So, you know, for me, um, you know, I, I got off to a late start, but I mean, I, I can't ask for more because I'm still in this game after 26 years um, and still going. I got 14 years as a player and, and still going as a coach. Incredible. You had a question, Z? So, you, um, so growing up in uh, basketball crazy North Carolina, I saw where you were a 
successful football player as well, uh, all the way up to the collegiate level. So how did that go about? And how did you end up playing both basketball and football uh, at Fayetteville State? It was, it, I mean, it, it's crazy. I was this close. I'm going to go ahead and put it right here. <laughs> that close to not even going to college. Wow. Really? It wasn't, wow. For, it wasn't, it wasn't for my, my cousin. Um, she told me, call her Armstrong, say, yo, have you applied to Fayetteville State? Because I, I had tried out for football with Lenora Ryan, um, basketball with uh, a couple schools, junior schools, uh, Montre Anderson up in uh, Black Mountain, North Carolina. I went up there and tried out for basketball, and it just didn't work out at that time. So mm -hmm. I was basically, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you, I was basically like, well, I guess I'll be getting a job. Wow, mm. you know, and um, my cousin come along and say, "Have you tried? Have you applied at Fayetteville State?" And I was like, "No." Nah. Applied, and a week later, I, I got accepted. Wow! Um, because if my thing was, I wanted to go play sports in college. Yeah. I didn't just want to go to college, and so here I am. Um, I go to Fayetteville State. Um, I get there and I walk on. I go first thing I do is. The next day, because um, my mom had brought me up there on a Sunday, so the next day is Monday. Football team has already been up there practicing. I go up there to the head coach, one of the assistant coaches for football, and ask him, yo, do y'all have trials for walk-on? And they was like, yeah. And I, I tried out and kicked the ball that day, and they ended up keeping me and wow. things like that. And so, um, but, you know, for me, that's how I, that's how I got to, to play two years of um, college football, but my first two years of college, I didn't play basketball. Um, wow. I you played, played football? In the yeah, I played football one year, and then my second year, I, you know, when, when, when the shackles are taking off of you, I'm <laughs> over there. I'm over there having a good time. I ain't, I ain't thinking about no studying, no nothing. <laughs> and, and, and I'm the type of person, I got to study. I can't just walk in there and be, I'm not smart like that. I just, yeah. Man, no. Mm -mm, I got to get in that book and study. And I'm over there just partying, have a good time. I see cute dolls. I see stepping. I see capitals. I see, you know, the deltas. I'm like, man, this is off the chain. You know? Right, and you at you at HBCU for people that don't know. So yeah. HBCU, I, I I went to I went to Morgan State. So just so you know, so yeah. I I already know. You know what I mean? So yeah, <laughs> and I tra I transferred yeah. for a reason, bro. It was just too much. I, I wasn't transferring. <laughs> I almost got. I almost didn't. Get, I almost didn't get to go back. Uh, mm. But I forgot. You know, hey, this is you up here for school. You up here <laughs> to get an education. Yeah. <laughs> so here I am. I'm enjoying doing all kind of crazy stuff, having fun. <laughs> yeah. um, and um if it, it I'm not gonna lie to you, uh I just didn't 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 buckle down. You know how kids leave and lose focus. I lost focus. Yeah. I didn't think about school. I was thinking about man, I'm on my own now. Right. You know, yeah. <laughs> I ain't yeah. got a I ain't got to pay for no apartment, you know. Nope. <laughs> and next thing you know, next thing you know, my grades come back uh, in December, and uh, <laughs> not to look at you. I didn't, pass, I didn't pass nothing but swimming. <laughs> <laughs> my mama, my mama was not so check this. So my mom was paying out of her pocket. Wow! Oh, wow! You weren't even on scholarship. No, I didn't. I like I say, I I just happened. To, yeah. Applied and went to school, got accepted and went to school. Was no scholarship. When I got on the team, I was a walk on. Wow, you can't waste and, uh, mom's money, bro. Oh man. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm I'm telling you to the day, if it wasn't for my oldest brother, uh -huh. I wouldn't be here sitting here talking to y'all. Uh, <sighs> if it wasn't for him, uh he told my mom, I, I flunked everything and except swimming. And I almost flunked swimming. I got <laughs> I got a C in swimming. <laughs> yeah, so and i'm not i'm not telling you those those stories if it wasn't for my brother and i'll never forget that sit down at the table because like mm -hmm. i'm saying you know sometimes we do things that is crazy when it's not your money it's my mm -hmm. mom's money she worked hard for her money yeah you know she worked two jobs for her money 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, me not thinking and not taking it serious, and you know, like I'm on vacation. Yeah. If it went for my big brother, say, Mom, I ain't going to never forget that mama. Let him go back. He's uh-huh. going to do better. He said, he's going to do better, mama. He looked at me across the table like, you better do better. Right. <laughs> I, 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 I did better because she was, y'all. Yeah. I was 18, 19, and she could have got a belt and whooped me. She would have whooped me. <laughs> she would have had to chase me down, but she would have whooped yeah. me. But, but thank God to my brother, my oldest brother, uh, Melvin. He said, Mom, just let him go back. He's going to do better. And I got my stuff together. Wow. It took me the next semester, the next school year, and then two years of summer school back to back. And so my third year when I, okay. I uh, came up, finally I got the opportunity to play basketball and that happened in, and that is that did happen in the first semester at the same time I was messing up right the intramural coach at Fairville State he um he became the interim intramural I mean inter, interim basketball coach his uh my third year there and but he saw me my freshman year when we played a uh Jamari type of game where everybody played and you know at black college yeah, yeah. State, you should know Aaron Amir. Oh, yeah. Is, is, is oh, yeah. Short. You know, Aaron Amir is almost better than the regular sport. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I'm playing in that. Nobody know I can play. I'm skinny. I'm, I'm slim. And um, this Q dog come down. He cross over me. Oh, he hit me good. I'm not going to do it. In Black College. Yeah. Like, oh. You know, black College. They run, they run on the floor. All oh, right. <laughs> Yeah, they slice it. They hype it up. They hype it up. <laughs> he hyped it up. They, they, he got me good. Yeah. So he tried it again. About a couple plays later, he tried again. And mm-hmm. this when I shut the gym down. Hey. He tried to come in there and hit me with that little crossover again, and I stole it. Hey. I got the hand for it, and I was by myself. Uh-huh. I cuffed up it. I put that oh. ball in my arm like this, raised mm-hmm. back like this. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Boy, I had about a couple girlfriends after that. Girlfriends. And 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 that's that's and that's crazy because he he became the interim coach in wow. my third year, and he was like, I didn't play football my third year. Uh, I played basketball my third, fourth, and fifth year, and, and uh, but he was my interim coach my first year. I ended up getting. Um, the uh, what you call it? I don't want to say MVP, the best player on the team, little, right. whatever they call it, uh, outstanding player, whatever they call it at that time. But um, then the next year, uh, Coach Capel, Jeff Capel, came in and um, wow. took over the program. Him and Mark Klein, um, and from there, Coach Klein, Coach Capel gave me a scholarship. Uh, that was nice. my first scholarship. I still didn't have a scholarship even playing my first year. And then he came in and gave me my last my last two years of scholarship. And uh, I just took off from there. He gave me a drill called Beat the Pro. I learned how to shoot. Uh, he put it on me. Yo, go in the gym and work out. You know, I don't I don't believe in these trainers. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't. I right, believe basketball in trainers. If you, if you, yeah, I, I believe in if you want to get better, you know. And yeah. there is some good trainers out there. So don't let me knock. I'm not going to knock nobody, you know, hustle. And I'm not going to knock nobody who's – who's doing it right. You know, right. I know there's some, there's some trainers out there that's not good. Some tra- and it is some trainers that's good. Right. And, uh, you know, for me, um, you know, I, I, he told me, I'm gonna leave it up to you. And I took one of my best friends and become, and this other guy became one of my <laughs> other best friends. Um, and we, we, we did this drill almost every day. And man, I just learned how to shoot the basketball. And then you can just see how much I developed and, you know, all I could do at that time was jump. I was athletic. I block your shot. I right. dunk on you. But if it, comes <laughs> to, if it comes to me making three or four jump shots in a row, uh-huh. good luck. Good luck and duck. And Uh-oh. duck. He said but good luck and duck. <laughs> and duck. And I learned, I learned how to shoot, man. And it, it, it just um, took me to another level. Because the one thing my college coach, rest in peace, he's in heaven now, his son is um, – Jeff, um, Jeff Capel, who's coach at University of Pittsburgh, him and his his uh, brother Jason Capel. Okay. Uh, and they those those guys played at Duke in Carolina, which is crazy, you know. But um, yeah, you know, he always told me, and I never forgot forgot about this. He always said, "Yo, everybody is athletic in the NBA. 
Mm. He said, you got to have something else to your game, be able to pass, dribble, mm -hmm. shoot, right. um, you know, all those things. And and that just, for me, was the next level for me was to learn how to shoot. And I did. And uh, I took that to heart and I, and I really worked on my game and, and, and look what happened. Uh, 14 year NBA career. I wow. Can't complain. Man, that's beautiful, bro. Uh, it, it's, it, it, it's been a, it's, it, it's, it's been a crazy ride, but it was a fun ride, but it was a crazy ride when you go back and you think like, you know, I could have been this close from put my hand in there. I'm over here doing this. <laughs> I could have been this close to being, you know, like I'm saying, if, if my brother don't persuade my mom, I could have right. been this close and, and, and being in different leagues and, you know, for being in and out of the, of, of a league. And, um, you know, I had some leagues that where I was doing well and the professional league folded, you know, things like that. And so, you know, I, it, it's been a blessing. But one thing I've, I, I have always been taught, and I think you can't teach this, is I, um, I learned how to play hard. Uh, yeah. I learned how to, you know, just – you know, leave it all out on the floor. And, and um, you know, for me, I, I, I always credit that to my, my two cousins, Odell and Ronnie Joe Armstrong, who they made me play football, tackle mm -hmm. football, when I was young with, with all the big boys. Right. And, and told me, yeah, yeah, you better not cry. Because I, you know, <laughs> I was like, my mom, my mom would drop me off with them, me yeah. and my brother, to, to, <laughs> for them to watch us. Right. They made us play. They made us play football with the older guys. And, and hey, you better not cry. <laughs> right, yeah. You, you better not cry. Get back and up. Get back up. For me, um, you know, um, you know, I, I, that that taught me how to how to have a toughness. I I, I'm, I, I really go back to it and I think, and I was like, man, that, that really taught me how to be tough. So, you know, I always had the right situations and the right things fall in place and um, that's all you can ask, and and you just take advantage of whatever opportunity or situation comes coming uh, in in your in your lane. And I did that. That's beautiful, man. So you played um, so you at Fayetteville State uh, played what two years um, about basketball there, right? Or one year? Three years basketball, two years football. Uh, okay. Yeah, two years football. <laughs> my, 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 real quick, I don't mean to catch up, but my senior year. No, you good. My senior year, I wasn't supposed to play football. And uh, right. the field goal kicker quit. He quit? And, and, how, how did he quit? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, I was so into basketball at that time, so I don't I don't know. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I just ate that soup skin. Let me get to that. But oh, my, no, coach, say, my college coach had the guys. I was in the cafeteria eating. You know, I'm over here trying to look at some ladies and girls. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, and, and and the boys, some of the players came in and said, "Yo, coach, want you to come by the office real quick." I'm like, you know, you, when you get when you get stuff like that, you be like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah, what do you want? Yeah, what, you what did I do? <laughs> what is, I, am I in trouble?" Right. So I go up there. He's like, "Look, man, yeah, yeah." He's like, "Look, man, the field goal kicker quit wow. um, the football team. It's about a week or two before the season about to start." Yeah. He was like, "Yo, can you help him out?" They need a kicker. I was like, oh, coach. <laughs> you know, I ain't played. I ain't played since my first year. It's two, three. Yeah. This is like four years later. I ain't played. But they remember you though. You must have had a foot on yeah. you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you know, I, I had, I had, yeah. My, that's why my toes is bad now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had a foot on me. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. I remember coaches like, yo. Just go out there and help them. This could help us get, you know, we had a black college. Okay. So we need any type of advantage to get stuff for yeah. the basketball team or stuff like that. You know, this can help us get some stuff from the basketball, for the basketball team. I was like, all right, coach. He right. said, all you got to do is go out there and kick for 30 minutes and you can leave. That was that was, that was was the way they confirmed it to me. Just come out there and kick for 30 minutes and you leave. You don't even have to put <laughs> no pads on. Just wear your hammer out there. Yeah. Man, I went out there about this time of the year. Oh, Lord. Hot as hell, yeah. <laughs> North Carolina, too? Hey. What? I had that hammer. All that, that sweat was just dropping. <laughs> man, I was like, man, I can't do this no more, man. So I left. I left for two days. I didn't go to, I didn't even go. I didn't go to practice. So I'm, yeah. I'm in that cafeteria again. All of a sudden, it's coming boys again. Man. 
yo, coach wants you, man, come by. He needs to come by. Come by the room. It's like, oh, I already know. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I go back. He's like, come on, man, what you doing, man? I thought you was going to help me out. I said, coach, it's hot out there, man. I can't do <laughs> right on that so, gear. <laughs> oh, my God. So in, end up, I'm going to make a long story short. I end up going back, end up setting. I say I set the record because I did it twice. This other guy did it one time. Set the record for field goal that same season, two forty-seven yard field goal. Wow! The first one I ever did it was against Terry uh, Bobby Bowden's son, Terry Bowden. Wow. Terry Bowden. Terry Jesus. Bowden was coaching at Sanford College, okay, in Alabama. Yeah, and I kicked a forty-seven yarder that day. We ended up getting beat thirty-nine to, to ten, and. Terry uh, Terry uh, Bowden left Sanford after that year and went to Auburn and went okay. eleven and zero. He went eleven and zero. Wow! The team was on probation; they couldn't go to no bowl game. And uh, <laughs> so I did it against Bobby Bowden's son, and then I did it home. I did it homecoming. Yeah. Oh, the last game of the season, we had to play this guy named Ben Cole, who played in the NFL. He played okay. at Livingston College. Ben Cole was a big tight end for the New England Patriots. He was number 87 when he played with New England. Yeah. So so we had a not only that day with homecoming the last game, you know how black college. Some yeah. we don't we wait to the last game sometimes. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I do I do the I do the uh, the game that day. The day before, I never forget, I really got in the groove about kicking. Like I got my groove back. And, yeah. You know, like Stella got her groove back. Yeah. yeah. Got her groove back and kick. <laughs> I was kicking the ball so good that day that my special team coach, uh, Coach Bond, said, "Hey man, come here, man." He's like, "I was like, yeah, coach." <laughs> yeah. I said, "Yeah, coach." He said, "Let me tell you something." He said, "Man, if you if you want to kick in the NFL, you really can kick in the NFL." He wow. He, know, he, he said, "I know you. I know you're into basketball now." Yeah, he said I know basketball is your thing, but I'm gonna let you know I you could kick in the NFL. The next day, I kicked two field goals, tied the record again, a 47 yarder and a 35 yarder in the second half. I was only one to score the second half. I kicked two field goals. We uh, we ended up winning the game, 13 to six. Wow! And then I Them field goals right came in handy. <laughs> oh, I, I was kicking that ball good right after yeah. the game. I had to leave and go do an in the squad scrimmage with the. Uh, with the basketball wow. team. Yeah. Man. All I ate was some Pringles that day. I had some <laughs> Pringles after the game. But, you know, that was, that, that was my thing. I mean, black college uh, really was great for me. It, it taught me a lot. Uh, one thing I love about black college is, you know, like I was saying, I had to do my work. You know, yeah. uh, I'm not the smartest person in the world. I got great common sense, which yeah. I take. But I'm not the smartest <laughs> person in the world, so I had to study. You yeah. know, I had to get in my books. And if you miss classes at and at, at that time at Fayetteville State Black College, you miss three days, they they drop you automatic. So mm. it wasn't it wasn't no like I'm just gonna miss this class and just I make it up. Nah. You right. miss it. That's you one done. day. You know what I'm saying? So I thank God for, for all that because you know it taught me about it, the lessons of you know how to be disciplined, how to how to, you know, depend on yourself, you know, because you you don't have your parents when you're there. Yeah, and um, but it, you know, I, I I contribute that all that to the way I grew up as a athlete, the way I became as a leader because I learned a lot of things just about real life stuff, you know. And uh, yeah. for me, the the toughest thing was I made the I made the basketball team my second year. I tried out, but I knew I couldn't play. I knew I wasn't eligible, mm. and uh, I ended up making the team. But the coach told me, "Yo." When you gonna be ready? I was like, uh, I think my grade's gonna be ready second semester, coach. <laughs> <laughs> but I was wanting to see, yeah. you know, for me, I wanted to see if I could play on that level, and yeah. and that was big, you know. And I and I knew I could play on that level, so it's just confidence, just continue to build and build, and and then I just took off from there. Man, so you you meaning to tell me I could have been seeing you out there kicking fifty yard field goals in the NFL at some point, but you chose basketball. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yes, indeed. Mark Mosley style. Mark Mo yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> the, the, and the crazy part was that the week I I tied the record. Yeah, I did the same. I it was about four or five weeks later. We was into a, like a six or seven game. 
we're about to go play Sanford College. Okay. And I haven't been in practice almost two or three days because we had already started basketball practice. Yeah. So I ain't been in practice. So I go, finally, I go Thursday when they started to have the special teams and stuff. And we had a we had an extra kicker. And he, okay. he, it was another kicker who, just in case, I got hurt. So they was like, Daryl, you ain't been in practice. So we're going to take over. Boy, he been here. He been working. Yeah. But, but they was like, I tell you what, we're going to have a kickoff. And whoever wins the kickoff goes on a road trip. And mm-hmm. to his advantage, he, he was in practice. I felt bad. But I didn't feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so we have this kickoff. He gets to about the 30 yard line. That's 40 yard line, 40 yard line. I mean, 40 yard field goal. Yeah. And after that 40 yard field goal, we keep going back another five yards and he was done. I was, you know, going yeah. back enough, go to the 50. Ooh. So, and we then was going away. away. That, yeah. Two days later, I end up tying the school record. And then I, I, I say I said it. Because I did it again twice um, the last game, but you know, uh, but like I said, it, it it was that's that was a great experience for me. I, I love football. I mean, I just finished watching. I'm a Washington football team fan. But oh I just, I no! Just, Come oh, on, yeah. man. Yes, yes, we are oh, DMV yeah. based podcast. Yeah, but Washington <laughs> sucks, man. They suck. Washington I'm just in football just fan. With you. <laughs> hey. Hey, and huh? what's, what's sad is that's all right. You know, I, I know it's the cowgirls and Philadelphia Eagles. The Giants, <laughs> and you know, I'm in Dallas. I let them know. Hey, oh, oh, you, oh, that's right there. Yeah. Y'all let Washington football team win a division without a name, right? With no name, no damn name. <laughs> about that. <laughs> hey, let them know, coach. Let them run know. Dallas and then come up here on Thanksgiving Day and whoop y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> let them know, coach, man. Yeah, but, yeah, bro. So, man, so back to the basketball thing. So, at Fayetteville State, um, so what I, I think before you even went pro to the NBA, you played overseas for a little bit, right? Yeah, well, my first, my first uh, professional thing uh, was the global was the Global Basketball Association. Okay, what is that? Drafted is that? to I got, well, you know, it don't exist no more. So I got drafted to um, the Raleigh Bullfrogs. Okay, uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina, that was Chris Corciani was on the team, Chuck Nevitt was on the team, almost almost NC State players was on the team, and some other gotcha. guys. Okay. So my first my first day driving up there, uh, I'm driving up in my Ford F1. I mean not F1, uh, Ford Escort. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's my first car. That's my first car. Ford and, Escort. And, and I don't know what coach was thinking that he got me a stick. I didn't know how to drive a stick. Boy, <laughs> oh, I tore up that clutch. That transmission. You know, so yeah, but my first day of practice. Uh, I'm sorry. The first day we had to go up there, and then we had a little event that night. We had to do at the hotel with with sponsorship and everything. And my first day driving up there, and it's shocked. It's just shocked, shocked with the daylight side of me. Is I'm driving up there from Fayetteville to Raleigh. It's about an hour and twenty, hour and thirty. Okay. And it's it's dim. It's like look like it's about ready to rain, and so you're just driving up there. It's a little chilly. And the news come across, come across the uh, radio. Magic Johnson will announce. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Magic Johnson will announce uh, his retirement. Yeah. Uh, he has AIDS, and I was like, "Oh wow, yeah, crazy." And then my, and then my second day, we in practice the night before we had the event. Chuck Dave, Chuck Nell, uh, Chuck Chuck. Um, Oh, Chuck, oh, God, I'm calling his name like, uh, wrong, but he, he Chuck Nevin. Chuck okay. Nevin is 7'6", played at NC State. Ooh, seven, six. He's there the night before, and he already been in the NBA before already, but he's playing with this team, the Raleigh Bullfrogs, and all of a sudden the next day in practice, um, Lorenzo Charles, um, rest in peace, uh, mm-hmm. Lorenzo Charles, I'm like looking at him like, where's Chuck Nevin, you know? Yeah. And we in practice we could, with Chuck. He's like, yo, you didn't hear? I was like, no. He got called up to the Lakers the night, the night, the wow. night that night. He got called up to the Lakers. The next day he was gone. I was like, this is how this works. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know that was a uh, that was like a, a waking for me, but uh, but I ended up getting released from that um, that um, that team. Uh, me and kind of me and Chris Cortiani kind of bumped heads. You know, I'm I'm fiery. He's fiery. He threw a yeah. hell ball. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to go. But he's he's the feature <laughs> guy. He's right, the feature yeah. guy. He's mm-hmm. Raleigh and everybody, everything. All the fans is Raleigh, Raleigh yep. State. You know, NC State. So. They ended up letting me go. I would go back to school, and I uh, start. I stayed with Coach Capo and his family, Miss Capo and and Jeff and Jason. Uh, but I, I I enrolled in school, but I couldn't. I couldn't concentrate. I right. couldn't. I couldn't do. It. I went right back to my first semester I ever went to Florida State. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a reason. I was like, I couldn't concentrate. Uh, I I I meant to basketball. I I I, I want to play. I want to yeah. play. I want to go somewhere. So one of our trainers, forgive me if I, I forget his name, but one of our trainers gave me a, a, a application said the USBL, okay. which this league would be the biggest league for me in my career to mm-hmm. to get me where I need to get to to get in the NBA. And right. the USBL was a summertime league, um, and it uh, started somewhere like in. February, March, and then went right before two weeks before training camp for summer summer NBA, what we have in Vegas okay. now. Yeah. Right. So I I get that. And one of my boys, uh, he's from New York. He, he was like, yo, you you need something? I was like, yeah, man, I need I just need $135 to go up here. Mark March. Right. And he gave me the $135. I drove up to my escort, hmm. Ford Escort. I learned how to drive then, so I wasn't burning anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I drive up to Atlanta. I drive up to Atlanta, um, Atlanta, Georgia, at Life College. Okay. It's where they was having the trials, the workouts. I had a trial. Mm-hmm. So I ended up trying out. Did great that week. Came back the next week. I had another trial. Did great that week. Mm-hmm. And everybody he he put me up against. He, he told me uh, this guy named Al Outlaw. Uh-huh. He's passed now. He's one of my he's one of my favorite coaches. But Al Outlaw, he said I was trying to cut you. <laughs> really? He said I was trying to cut <laughs> you. And he said, but everybody I put against you, you outworked them defensively. I mean, you picked them up ninety four feet, um, made them work, didn't give them nothing easy, and then then I found out you can score offensively a little bit. Right. So. He was like, "Get your bags. You are going on a road trip. You are on the team." So wow. I ended up, I ended up going on that, um, and uh, played that year. We lost in the championship game. We played at North Florida. So like, like I always, I, I, I truly believe in trusting God. Yeah. Um, I always, like, wow, this is crazy. I played the championship game at North Florida. Well, when I played with Orlando. We used to drive up to Jacksonville because North Florida is at Jacksonville. We used yeah. to drive up to Jacksonville to guess where we did our training camp at? North Florida. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I see I where am. this is going. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, so that's why I say I, I believe and trust in them. But I, 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 um, we lost the championship game. Um, I forgot who we played. We lost the championship game. And uh, so I, we got back to Atlanta. And then it was our last payday. I paid was only two hundred dollars a week. That's all we got paid. Right. And um, yeah, the hustle was real. The hustle was real. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I'm sitting in there now. I'm, I'm going through my mind like, man, what you gonna do now? You know, to myself. So right. my coach was like, Al, Outlaw was like, uh, yo, um, good job, man. He's like, yo, good job, man. He said, you need to get your stuff together. I was like, what? What's going on? He said, you um, you going to go in Atlanta training camp. I was like, get out of here. <laughs> he kid, wow, he said, that's he, crazy. He, he said, you're going to go in Atlanta summer camp. So for me, you know, for, for me, it's like three or four years. I'm hustling, trying to yeah, get this, yeah. is what, this is what I want. Right. And I get into their training camp. Rodney Monroe was one of their draft picks. Stacey Alderman. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we did it at the same place, Life College, where we played our, our games at. Right. Uh, and so I ended up making a team, nice. and um, went through we went through summer camp. Um, Miami, Miami hosted. Okay. Miami, he they hosted down at West Palm Beach Community College. I'm about to put you on some more history. West Palm Beach Community College, they hosted that. It was us, it was Miami, Orlando, Charlotte, and Atlanta. Just okay. four teams there. And um, so I I went through this year, I went through my first game. It was a guy named Latario Green uh, who mm. got drafted to Orlando. Latario Green was bigger than me, stronger than me, and he was hounding me that day. Mm. And I'll never forget these words stuck with me. Um, this coach named Randy Whitson Whit um, Whit said, hey, Daryl Armstrong, look at man. He put his arm around me. Look uh -huh. at man. You got to be a man out here. You can't oh. let him do that to you. Yeah. And that right there just stuck. It stuck with me. So that year, I, I did all right. I didn't do as well as I need to do. So right. I went back. Um, I played again in um, – the CBA. Okay. I got at least a month later. Went back to the Global Basketball Association. Now I'm in I'm in Albany, Georgia, tearing that league up. <laughs> yeah. Tearing it up and the league folds. Oh wow. The league, the league folds. Not only did the league fold, we on our way to Fairville, North Carolina, where that's why I played my college ball. So we about yeah. to play the Fairville team. The okay. league fold. So Damn. now I can't find no job. I go get a nine to five. I yeah. go to a yarn factory, uh, cook the yarn, pack it up, box it up, put it to the side. Yeah. For the people who was ready to go. And then I'm doing that from seven to, I'm doing that from eleven to seven in the morning. Wow. So you had a real nine to uh, five. <laughs> no, that was uh, 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 it was a real nine to five. I had to do it. Yeah. Uh, and then and then after that, the um the USBL came back around. Okay. I went played in I went played in that again and then I got invited into Orlando Magic Camp. Mm. And um, that was the craziest situation because um oh, John Gable was a GM at that time. John okay. Gable was not coming down there to watch me. He coming down there to watch these other two guys who play for Daytona. We okay. had a black college. I'm in my element now. I'm, I'm, I'm down in my element. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they yeah. know the beat. You know, uh, they don't, it's a dude coming college in that gym. Yep. <laughs> and, 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 and behind one of the behind one of the goals, they had a stage. Oh, uh -huh. I'm in my element. <laughs> That's how Fairfield State was. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, <laughs> the guy that uh, he come watch, I had to play against. He was a point guard. Uh, okay. I think they went. They went to the Sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament that year. I think he played at North Kentucky or West Kentucky. It was one of those two schools. I'm not for sure which school it was they played at. Yeah. I I, I saw this guy all night. I scored 45 points, had three Ooh. dunks. Oh, my gosh. And then we played on Friday night, 45 points, three dunks. Come oh back God. the next night, I had 30 points, a couple of dunks. And then uh, Al Outlaw was doing this right here after the game. And we lost both games. Close game. It was close game. We lost both games. Yeah. And Al was doing this right here. <laughs> Look what I got. <laughs> I was like, what's that? He's like, that's Orlando Magic. They want you to come into camp. Oh, man. Oh, I was God. like, are you serious? He's like, yeah. yeah. So I went into camp. Um, and and that's when Bison Daly was, was there. Mm -hmm. We did it at um, University of North, uh, Central Florida. Uh, on okay. main campus, we did it at their gym. But Bison Daly was going through his depression thing at that time. Oh, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know at the time. But he yeah. was a good guy. He, he, you know, he was real cool. I ride with him after the practice, and we just, you know, go go from there. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, so I end up. But what's crazy was I end up playing with stitches in my hand right here. What Six happened? Stitches in my hand. Just trying to catch myself on the floor in the USBL, and my my fingers pop. Oh, okay, okay. So, and then what was crazy, I heard um, my coach had told me, he said, during that time in the USBL, New Jersey, some of their front office people came up from um, New Jersey and Mid uh, we was in Mid Mid Midland, uh, Connecticut. Okay. And we we was playing there, and uh, he told me for the game, he said, we got a couple of New Jersey organization people come up to watch. I was like, all right, cool. But I had my hand wrapped. I yeah. Had stitches in there. 
my dumb ass go in there and dump one. <laughs> Man. I get on the break and I want to show them, hey, here it is. Yeah. <laughs> Split the stitches. Damn. Split the stitches. Uh, I was already paying with a pad on my hand. Yeah. It's, it's, that, that's the grind. I had to grind. Yeah. So yeah. I end up uh, end up that year going into Orlando camp. And uh, we played well. I played really well. I, 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 I Every year, I kept making progress. And I couldn't shoot the ball, though, because I, mm. I it was it was uh, Your hand, yeah. It was my hand. But the defensively side and just doing things and taking charges, it was there. And, and then um, – but you know, fortunately, I went I went overseas and played in Cyprus, Greece, won a championship there. Came back and played in the USBL again, and um, uh, I don't know if we won a championship in the USBL, but we I went into summer camp again with Orlando. Guess mm-hmm. where? Was that West Palm Beach Community College again? <laughs> now, <to> where <laughs> now this is what the funny part because we we always used to play there against a team there in the USBL. I was the only player that ever in the history. One player who got close was Charlie Ward when he played. His, he played one year in the USBL. Wow. Uh, and he got close, but I, I ended up getting a, a quadruple double. Wow. Um, Jesus. And I, I, I you don't hear that every day. <laughs> I did it off the bench. It was crazy. I didn't know what it was. I was yeah. all black collar. We just trying to get <laughs> a win. We ain't worried about no quadruple double, no triple right. double, nothing like that. <laughs> and, um, I never forget that day. Uh, me and a couple of the guys, we had some chicks on the road with us, uh-huh. and we all we all went swimming before the game. <laughs> Coach Outlaw came out to that pool like, "What the hell is y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> y'all Coach, you mess with your eyes." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we get out of the pool that day. I went. Never forget. I went sixteen for twenty four from the field. I had 43 points off the bench, 43 points, wow. 10 assists, 13 rebounds, and 10 steals. I also had 10, 10, 10 steals. To be honest with you. Oh. I also had 10 turnovers. I don't know what to call that. Yeah, that's the, that's the Russell Westbrook. Oh, that, that was that was Russell Westbrook, the third three. <laughs> um, so when we always played at, 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 that, at that gym, my last yeah. year basically playing there, uh, and we was in the summer league, I, I tore that league up. I finally now, this is my third or fourth year, I think it's my third year, yeah. and um, I finally, te- I, I'm tearing the league up. I I, I'm, I told you I made progress. Now I'm yeah. averaging like 15, 16 points, hitting game winners in the first game. Second game, come back at 21, we win again. In the last game, we play in my, my hometown, Charlotte, North Carolina. I can say Charlotte is also my hometown. And okay. we got this guy named Derek Hancock who played at the uh, University of Kansas. He was a leap or two. Somehow uh-huh. I steal the ball from him. Nobody, I ain't had a dunk the whole time I've been there. <laughs> he chasing me. Yeah. And it's packed in there. I told Uh-oh. that gym especially. I turned that thing, I dropped that thing. <laughs> <Woo! Yeah. laughs> man. Oh, man. But, everybody went crazy. <laughs> oh, everybody went crazy. But at the same time, like I'm saying, I just kept making progress, and then from there, I went to I went I could have I could have went in bedroom camp with Orlando, but they wasn't going to guarantee all my money. Oh, okay, okay. They was only going to partially guarantee me. So, excuse me, I decided to go go to Spain, play in one of the second best league in the world, was the ACB. Mm. Um, Luca Luca played in that league. Chris Porzingis played in that league. I beat a Sabonis played in that league. Uh, mm. Michael Curry played in that league. I mean, it was a lot of talent. It was a great. It was a great league. I mean, Barcelona players, uh, they Spanish players, are something else good. I mean, they are really good. With American, don't even start when they come over there. That's how good they Spanish players are. Yeah. Um, But I ended up uh, winning the scoring title over over the uh, Hall of Famer Oscar Smith. Yeah, Uh, Brazilian. Yeah. Yeah. He was forty two at that time. Forty-two years old, and my last five games, he came on my last five. Right before my last five games, he came past me, and I, I led the whole time. Yeah, and he came past me like was leading by twenty-something points. Forty-two years old, still, still getting bucked. <laughs> that was so much. Still coming off. <laughs> I, I, I tell you not, I did not average under. 
I did not average under 37 points. I had 37, 38, 37, 37, and 38. Man. In my last game, I had 38, and I ended up winning the scoring title. But that day, we have uh, we were supposed to play on a Sunday. Yeah, They moved the game ahead to Friday. I beat us a bonus then was in the, the European Championship. So we was trying mm-hmm. to give them two or three more days of extra practice for right. the whole league. Um, when did I get the call that Orlando Magic wanted to sign me? That Friday. Wow. I never, I never, I never forget. I was playing Nintendo. I was playing, <laughs> the, um, I was playing the NBA jams. Yeah. Uh, I mean NBA <laughs> Live with with Latrell Sprewell and the Golden State Warriors. Damn. <laughs> so soon, soon as I finish that, I go to lay down and my my phone ringing. It's my agent. My agent's like, "Yo, uh, what you doing?" I was like, "Man." I said nothing. I'm about to get ready for this game. I take a nap. He said, "When you leave?" And I said, "I'm trying to leave tomorrow, but all the flights are booked." Yeah. And he was like, well, "He was like, well, you got to leave tomorrow." Damn. I said, "What you mean?" Yeah. He's like my antenna's like, "Ding." <laughs> <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> yeah. He said, "It's a 80 percent chance you're gonna sign with Orlando tomorrow." Wow. And and, and I'm sitting here like, "Nah." Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. He's like, "Yeah." He said, "Don't say nothing." He said, go to the game, play the game, and I'm going to call you after the game. So I can't sleep the whole day. <laughs> I bet you can't. <laughs> it's, 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 it's probably about three hours before I got to leave to go to the gym. And I'm, and I'm laying in bed, and I can't sleep. <laughs> so I get up, get my stuff together, and uh, go to the gym. And right now the excitement is always oh, in me. So I'm just – like I'm just sitting there. Yeah. I'm just sitting there and I'm and I, I don't realize it, but my teammate, one of my teammates realized it. He saw, yeah. Uh, he was one of the Americans. And uh his name was Chandler Thompson. Chandler Thompson was like, DA, what's wrong with you, man? That's like, man, that man. And I'm just <laughs> like, I don't know I don't know what he saw in my body language, but he saw it. He saw, he yeah. Said, nah, he said, he said, DA, something going on with you, man. <laughs> so I was like, you know, my agent said, don't say nothing. Yeah. And I was like, yo, I was like, yo, come here. Because he had he he had played overseas uh for about six years before I got over there. Probably, yeah, he probably played over there about five or six years before I got over there on that same okay. team. So he came, walked over there, sat beside me. I said, man, don't say nothing. He was like, yeah. I ain't said nothing. Yeah. I was like, yo, I'm I'm on. It's an eighty percent chance I'm gonna sign with Orlando tomorrow. He's like, get the hell out of here! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no, oh, man. I said, I'm not lying, man. He's like, how you find? He said, my agent called me today, yo, eighty percent chance. So I ain't supposed to say nothing. I'm, you know, go through this game. So after the game, the team want to do a team team dinner. I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yo, I want to get the fuck out of here. I'm in there like this, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so that night, that night I scored thirty eight. I had eight threes made. Oh my God, I, I had like I mean I was hot. I had all eights around the board. Yeah. And then after the game, we went eight, and I'm sitting. And now I'm I'm right down the street from, from my apartment, so I can I can walk just walk to my. I ran. Matter of fact, don't worry. About that. <laughs> <laughs> so so it ain't no cell phones at that time. Yeah. yeah. There ain't no cell phones. So I'm just right. sitting there. I'm picking my food. Finally, the, the guy was like, well, everybody, y'all can leave. Enjoy yourself. And uh, I was supposed to stay over there for another week. Okay. So I left and ran to the house. <laughs> Got to the house and um, was just sitting there waiting. You know, phone, phone ain't rung, nothing. Doorbell yeah. ring. My boys, then, they come over. Like <laughs> both of them, both of the Americans. We because at that time you can have three Americans on your team, and, okay. Okay. and I had two Americans on my team, and right. um, so they come over chilling. And uh, next thing you know, my phone, my house phone, run, mm. and uh, I think I picked that thing up soon as it ring. Hello, <laughs> hello, <laughs> and then my agent, the agent, say congratulations. And I'm thinking he's talking about the game. Yeah. I said, I said, thank you. And then he got quiet. I got quiet. He's like, you're an you're official, official member of Orlando Magic. Wow. And I'm like, what? He's like, That's yeah. incredible. 
He said, it's supposed to be a ticket for you uh, at the airport. Um, just go in. Take your luggage and everything. I left the I left the Nintendo radio. <laughs> everything you buy new ones. <laughs> everything. So I get there, and um, I got the family uh, cab driver to take me. Him, his daughter, his wife took me. I'm like two hours away from the airport where where, where I went where they had me going. Okay. So I get to San Diego, Vigo. I mean, I get to San Diego, Spain. Um, go in there, and, and the air, airline is Ibera. So I was like, yo. I went up there last July. I said, is it a ticket for Daryl Armstrong? She was like, you got your passport? I was like, yes, ma'am. So give it to me. She said, you got any luggage? I was like, yes, ma'am. But in the car, she said, go get it. I went and grab that mug. Told them, <laughs> bye-bye. Thank See you. Ya. <laughs> y'all almost killed me because y'all driving fast. Y'all driving fast. <laughs> Overseas, overseas people, overseas cab drivers drive fast. Oh yeah! So I go in there, give my, give her my luggage. She give me my ticket, put my luggage on there, take it in the back, go up there and get on the plane. Man, it was like flying, and I'm, and I'm, I can't sleep. I was man. like, wow, this is crazy. So I end up going to uh, New York to Kennedy. Took a small plane from Kennedy to Philadelphia. As I land, John Gable meet me. He gives me the phone. I do an interview with Scott and Nez. Scott and Nez is talking to me, my body. And then I get off. We go get my luggage. The team is already at the at the gym because yeah. it's like six o'clock. So it's almost seven. So uh, I go get my uh, luggage. We, we get jump in the cab, go over to the Spectrum, uh, get out. First thing I do, go in. He says, introduce me to coach again, Coach Brian Hill. Yeah. Uh, first two players I met was Shaq. Matter of fact, they, I met wow. them first before I met Brian Hill. As I'm walking through, going in the doors, Shaq and Horace Grant was right there. <laughs> I said, damn. <laughs> <laughs> These are big boys. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't no play against nothing like this right, right. <laughs> they made them, You ain't know they made them like that, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> I went to Black College. We're almost the same size. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I met Shaq, met Penny. I mean, I'm not Penny. Penny was hurt. I met Shaq, met uh, okay. at Horace Grant. And then I said hello to Brian Hill. And I went in there. I saw my name on my back of my jersey. They had Armstrong number 10. And uh, so I, 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 when I met Shaq, Shaq was like, look, I don't know what they told him about me. He's like, look, hey, I'll run the floor for you. He's like, hey, I'm going to run. Look for me. I'm going to duck in there. I got you. And oh, like, shit. All right, cool. All right, cool. <laughs> so, you know, I and then I. I went on the court, my agent and uh, his assistant finally saw me. Uh, the guy who recruited me for for him, he, they they both were out there looking. I say hello to them and I go get a couple shots. I'm like surreal. I'm like, man, like, I'm, like wow. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like this is this is it. So the whole time I didn't play that night. So the whole time I'm just sitting on the bench like this, and I'm like, man, this Damn. is crazy. Yeah, I'm bro. just I'm just in Spain now. I'm over here up with Shaq and uh, all of them because Nick Adams was hurt, Shaq uh, Penny was hurt. Yeah, and um, so I'm just sitting there. But um, you know that from there, that's that's where it all started. And that's how I got there. And then after the game, since I, you know I didn't play after the game, you know shower, get on the bus. Yeah, so I'm going through the new ro- routine of how the NBA do it. Uh huh. <laughs> now, <laughs> now I get on the bus. And um, I'm like, I sunk, sunk down in the seat, like, I'm almost ready to go. <laughs> so all the adrenaline, all the adrenaline is gone. Yeah. Like, I'm, 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 I'm drained now. It's, yeah. What a 20, what a 24 hours. So we get to the airport. Now I'm thinking, like, I'm so tired. I'm like, I don't want to go through the airport. Right. I don't want to have to go check through, uh, do this. All of a sudden, we go to a gate and go. Keep going, the buses keep going. Uh-huh. Pull up right beside the airport. And I look, I never forget. I told Donald Roy, I was like, yo, I said, yo, man, we um we don't have to go to the airport. <laughs> pull up this plane. <laughs> Donald Roy say, Donald Roy looked at me and said, hey young fella, professional rankings. Right. We, don't, we don't have to go to the airport no more. He <laughs> thought he's gonna go, go to the airport. <laughs> yeah, I'm like. So now I'm like drained. I, I yeah. get off that bus, hop on the plane, and I don't know where to sit, so I'll make sure where, where y'all want me to sit. I sit, yeah. 
and everything is like first class. I'm like, oh wow. God, I really made it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I really made it, buddy. What what an experience. And then, you know, from there it just took off. Um, I had to so I continue had to work my first two years. I had to really work. Oh, we had a we had a solid team, Brian. Y'all Strong. had a nice squad, yeah. We had a nice squad. So I, I just I didn't come in and just start playing. And then they drafted Brooks Thompson, which I knew they was gonna get him the first opportunity because they, they that was their draft pick. Drafted, you, know? Yeah. you know, every team wants to make sure that they uh giving that guy the right opportunity and 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 they not looking bad saying oh we shouldn't have drafted him. But you know, I right. knew I was gonna have to outwork him or you know, somehow find a way to get on the floor. So my first two years, I really didn't play. I played garbage minutes, and, and I played those minutes serious. I took it serious. I didn't gotcha. care if it was five minutes, six minutes. You know, I went out there and played hard, and mm-hmm. uh, that was my playing time, and, and along with my with my practice time. But, you know, I couldn't ask for more just to, you know, first nine years to be in Orlando was uh, incredible. That's my incredible, first year, man. I go to the NBA Finals. Yeah, what was that like, man? Like, bro, let's, you're literally your first year going to the fucking finals. Like, what was that like? Yeah, I mean, it, it. All those guys showed me and taught me how you gotta, how you have to work. You yeah. know what, what type of things you have to do to get to this success. Uh, and then, uh, fortunately for me, I've been twice, uh, two more times after that, and and lost one to Miami as a player. And then. Came back as a coach yeah. and won one against Miami. So, you know, uh, they they gave me the blueprint. And I think I thank Penny. I thank B. Shaw. I thank you know Nick Anderson, Dennis Scott, Horace Grant. Um, you know, uh, Scott Turner. Uh, I mean, um, you know, it, and the list could just keep going on. The guys who played, you know, Dylan, uh, uh, Don Roy, Anthony Bowie, because those were the guys who was playing, and I had a chance to see. Mm-hmm. how the game and how hard they played the game. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, for me, uh, it, it was a learning experience. I, I took everything in and, and I wanted to get back there. Yeah. Once you get, for me, once I get there, I got to go back. You right. know, that was that was the thing for me. And I think that's what made, for me, that made the Hard and Hustle team so special because not only um, was I coming off the sixth man and most improved, but I was also coming off where we got Ben Wallace. We in a trade. Yeah. Nobody, nobody really knew about Ben. Washington, yeah. Washington Wizards did, um, <laughs> but he wasn't getting a chance to play because Ben yeah. had Chris Webber, right? Um, Chris Webber, yeah. Rasheed Wallace, all um, them guys. Jawan Howard, Jawan Howard, yeah. Uh, yeah. All those guys before him. Yeah. So he was kind of like, and and he was kind of like left left out, you know. Mm-hmm. And then when we got him. Um, you know, I knew he was from Black College. Um, I knew I had him. I knew I had Bo Outlaw. I, I, I knew I had some guys that was going to play hard. I just need two bigs to play hard with. Play hard, yeah. yeah. Play and hard to run the floor. Run, and run the floor and block shots. And then I had Tariq Wahead before we traded him. He, I mean, he wasn't a shooter, uh, uh, anything, but he could play. The, he can defend and. You know, in this league, if you can defend, you can you can win some games. You'll mm-hmm. figure out and find ways how to score, and um, so that's why we became you know in Chucky Atkins. That was his first year. You know, oh okay, he did, he was over that bright eye. <laughs> he he's he's bright eyed because you know he's been through camp before. Right, where he didn't get the opportunity, the right opportunity. Then all of a sudden, when he got in camp. I ain't gonna never forget Doc Rivers. That was his first year. Doc Rivers told him. Hey man, I ain't bring you in here to just cut you. I brought <laughs> yeah. you in here to play. Play, yeah. <laughs> you know, I brought you in here. You gonna you gonna play? And Chucky did a great job with us, man. I mean, so you know, uh, from there, I mean, Mike Dodiak, uh, Pat Garrity. I mean, we mm-hmm. we had some solid leadership young guys who was trying to make their way. You know, we had guys who wanted to prove people wrong. You know, they picked us to win ten games that year. Ten games? No. Oh my they god! Picked us, they picked us to win ten games that year, but uh, they found out that uh, <laughs> we wasn't going to settle for that. You know, we we won forty one games. We went forty one and forty one. Doc was the coach of the year, um, mm-hmm. and then in, in that season we had two. I think it was two ten games losing streaks, and still won forty one games. 
Wow. And I I, I never forget. Uh, and Ben Ben Wallace never really said a lot. <laughs> you know, that was my hangout partner on the road because I was like, big big fella, where big we going? Ben. He's like, I want to man. <laughs> Ah, right, let's go to this bar, man. Have a couple of drinks, play some pool, you know. But he, wherever I say that, I with you, man. All right, let's go. Yeah. But, um, you know, um, they. I never forget he. We 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 had we own one of those ten game losing streak. He he don't say a lot, but he walked in the locker room and we. He was we, mad we, as hell. We, all, <laughs> we played those games close. Yeah. We walk, in, we walk in the locker room. And I never forget. He walked in there. He said it. He said, he said, I don't know if I can cuss. He said, there's more victory shit. No, you can cuss. He said, there's he said, more victory shit getting old. Oh. I said, you let him we know. Hurry up and win. He don't hardly say too much. We better hurry up and win. Right, yeah. But, um, you know, we end up losing um, the second game to the last to Milwaukee. Uh, okay. We beat them. We're going to be in the playoff. They beat us. They going to they go into the playoff. They end up beating us at the buzzer. Chucky had a shot at the buzzer. But I mean, you know, to this day, um, Orlando, that's yeah. what the fans love. Yeah. Um, that hard and muscle team. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm always been blessed that uh, people always want people who going to play hard and who's going, who's going to give it their all. And Orlando gave it up for us. And, 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 in that last game, um, the game before, not the last game, them fans came out. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was it was fun because uh, we worked we worked so hard. I don't, you know, I hate people to, you know, talk about. It's like they talk about your character. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. like like you can't do it, right? You know, I, I, like we. It's a saying. You you. I put on my bridges the same way everybody else put yeah, on their same bridges, way. You know? Yeah. And uh, so you know, but for for us, um, for the organization, it's like we won the city. We won our fans, and man, it was beautiful. Oh, Monty Williams, and we also had. Monty oh yeah, Monty Williams, Williams. yeah, man. Yeah. And so, <laughs> I mean, it was it was a special group of guys. Um, you know, for me, I'm a coach. Monty, a coach. Um, Chucky does a lot of training with kids. Uh, Pat yeah. Gurney went on to be. Um, uh, I don't, I don't want to say president, but something with the D- Detroit Pistons as an organization, big okay. time organization. Uh, I'm not for sure what was his uh, role, but I mean, you know, you 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 look at all the guys that um, was part of that team that's done done a lot of great things off the floor. Wow, man, that that's just yeah. an incredible story. Like I said, that's just like I said, your, your journey. I wanted to bring you on here. Like I said, your story. A lot of people don't know. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like a lot of people might know Daryl Armstrong, like NBA veteran, you know, assistant head coach and coaching NBA. But like I said, you had an incredible story. I remember reading it in the article, and that was one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on, man. Like just, you know, your drive and you know your character. You know what I mean? It's and then it's Hall just, of Fame, Magic Hall of Famer now. <laughs> yeah, Magic Hall of ain't Famer, that, man. Ain't, ain't that something? <laughs> yeah, you know, a guy, a guy who had to sit the first two years of his. Uh, Years with Orlando, I couldn't. I, did, I couldn't get on the floor because I we were so stacked. And yeah. um, but once again, I told you, I'm, I'm a, if I'm a guy who complained, uh, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. I was a guy who wanted to get out there on the floor and, and help my teammates. And uh, I had to bust my tail and work hard every day and and uh, stay late, come early. You know that was my thing. And and uh, 14 years later, I was in the NBA still. Finished up a career. That's crazy, man. Ice. That's incredible, bro. Bro, I gotta ask you, man. What was it like uh, playing with uh, with Tracy, man? T Mac. I know a lot of guys in my charge to the game group, man. What was it like just playing with him? Oh, it was it was fun. I mean, we 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 had a good time. Me and Tracy used to we used to have uh, connecting rooms together. Cause we oh, always yeah? play, we always played Madden. Yeah, we are easy, we are dude, you know. Yeah, but we used to have connecting rooms together because that's what we did on the road most of the time. He, he wasn't the type of guy to go out. I was. I go out. You know, right? I, I, I'm going out. You know, but, you know. T Mac, T Mac became pretty big, and, and you know, so and he was pretty tall. So I don't think he was to see him. In right. <laughs> he can't fit in. You know, he just yeah. stuck out like a sore thumb. They're like, oh, that's yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, but um. It was it was fun. I mean, I've been blessed 
I, the one, the one thing I, I, excuse me, regret, not so much regret, mm-hmm. just be like, dang, what if I could have played with Shaq or right, yeah, they the traded him, right? Yeah. No, they, well, you know, he left. As a well, he kid. left. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. So, what if I could have, you know, played with Shaq? Um, how 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 different would it have been? I mean, I don't know. You know, what if I could have. Play with Shaq and with Penny can go to the two guard and blah blah. Yeah. But you know, you ask yourself, you, you think about those things. But uh, for me, I've been blessed. I mean, I had a, a superstar in Penny Hardaway that uh, who could play, but also would would let me do my thing. Uh, I've been blessed to have a, a, a great coach in Doc Rivers, uh, Chuck Daly, Brian Hill, uh, Richie Adubato, who uh, I blossom man. You know when uh, he took over as an interim coach and in the playoffs against Miami when I, you know, I got my first opportunity to play in the playoff. Um, so I've been blessed to have a lot of good coaches in Orlando, uh, and uh, but I also been blessed to have a lot of good players around me. You know, from big man's Horace Grant, you know, teaching me how to run the pick and roll. Uh, Penny Hardaway showing me how to run the pick and roll. Uh, Brian Shaw. Uh, Dennis Scott, all those guys, Nick Anderson, uh, you know, and the list just keep, keeps going on and on as I go down my my my, my nine year career in Orlando, and then they get a, a guy like Grant Hill and Tracy McGrady, but you know, Grant unfortunately didn't really get to play because of his injury to his ankle, but the. Yeah. To, to see the the blossom of Trace McGrady, where where a lot of people don't know when he was in Detroit, uh, when he was in Toronto, he was a defensive player. They, you know, he wasn't really a scorer like that uh, when he came to Orlando, and he he blossomed into a scorer. Uh, you know, leading the league and scoring one year, and uh, he's just so long. I mean, it was yeah. amazing the things that he could do. Uh, but it, it was fun. I mean, it was exciting. You know, we had uh, a, a the number one seed team, three and one, and and um, you know, unfortunately, we couldn't finish this the, the game. We couldn't finish the series. Um, I, I remember game game three and game four. I had eighteen and twenty, yeah. and we was running a one two. We was running a two one pick and roll with T Mac with handle. I set the screen, and they didn't know how to handle that that uh, pick and roll, but then they start taking me away. They start, you know, making other guys make plays, and um, so you know, unfortunately, we came up short. But you know, it was my last year in the, in, in, in uh, Orlando Magic uh, uniform. But you know, I can't complain. First nine years is, was was glory, was special, um, especially when uh, you know, like I was saying, you know, they picked you to win ten games after Penny yeah. got traded and. Horace Grant gone, and yeah. here I am with guys that people really don't know besides myself and Bo Outlaw, and, right. and uh, Mike Doliak was on the team at the yeah. time, Matt Harper, and and we found a way to win 41 games. Uh, it was incredible, and it was it was, it was fun. It was exciting, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, that gave you that gave us an edge to prove people wrong. It gave us an edge to win, and and we took advantage of that edge to win. And that's beautiful. <clears throat> that is beautiful. Z, you had a question, man? I wanted to know what what was it like uh, playing with Dirk and then yeah. oh, with Dallas coaching. Yeah, <laughs> everybody so loved Dirk. Me, I mean, yeah. What was Dirk like? Well, I'll be honest with you. When you play with him, you don't have to coach. Uh, I didn't have to coach him when I when I coached. Uh, me coaching him was was playing with him. Uh, he mm-hmm. understood mm-hmm. the type of player I was. He knew, you know, at that time in my career. I mean, I couldn't. I didn't play forty minutes at, at that time, but I would play some nights. I can get twenty minutes to twenty-five minutes in, and some nights I might not play uh, yeah. because we were so solid and we was really good as a team. And but it was fun. He was always exciting. He was he was the best. Um, mm. He he put he put his work in. And, um, you know, he he did what he was supposed to do to. to you know, get us, get us where we need to go, and we we got to the championship. You know, and I and I've been blessed. And, you yeah. know, I always, I always think back. You know, they traded for me um, from New Orleans. Oh, and, the, uh, Dallas did. Yeah. And, okay. 
So my first year, we go, we go to the second round. We get beat by Phoenix. My, my, I mean, my first year, we get beat by Phoenix right. in the second round, and then, um, my my next year, we go to the NBA Finals, and we beat Phoenix on on their floor to go to the NBA Finals. Man. Uh, fortunately, we came up short, but I, yeah. I'll, I, I've been I've been blessed, um, and and I don't like to sound or be cocky, but you know I do have a I do have a cocky side about how I play this game. You and got to I, be what yeah. I, what I and what I bring, and I bring a winning spirit, a winning, uh, um, a, a winning stride where. I want to get to that next level of getting to a championship and winning a championship. And so for me, the last time I was there was with Orlando. And then mm-hmm. my my next two times, it's been with Dallas Mavericks as a player. The first time in their history of the organization they got there and, you know, we came up short and then we get, we get there again. But I've been, I've been fortunate to be with that organ, this organization to go to the NBA finals twice. And, you know, uh, I would love to say it's cost me, but it wasn't. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, you played a part into it, man. Part, I, exactly right, and that's how I always look. I had, I always had a part in it, and you know, for me, it's it's been fun that I've been a part of this organization, which has been around so long, to finally mm-hmm. get them to an NBA Finals, and um, and then the next time we get there, we win it. But uh, just special. I mean, you know, I, I like to win. Uh, yeah, I'm. A, I, you know, I, I'm a winner. I'm a find ways to win. I don't know how. No, don't know how I'm gonna do it. But you know, it's all about for me. It's about winning. And if you're around me, you 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 you're gonna see that attitude, uh, that energy will rub off on you because I want to win. Uh, I don't I don't like losing. I don't like the people like I was saying. They saying we win in ten games. No, no. That yeah. that gave me an edge. <laughs> that gave me an edge along with all the other guys. Gave my gave my edge, you know, and I and I felt like I was the leader of that team, and I became the leader without even knowing I was. I I became the leader because when that game started, it was my energy that I I pick up the ball full mm-hmm. court, I mm-hmm. push the ball back. I used to tell Ben Wallace and Bo Outlaw, "Look, I know I'm a, I'm a know what I'm gonna get on this on the defense end." <laughs> so, so I don't care what Doc say. Yeah. If you run this floor, you post up, you get down there. I'm throwing yeah. the ball into you. Right? Yeah, you go to yeah. work. You go to work. Yeah. And, and uh, so you know when you when you tend to do things like that, guys follow you. Guys is with you. Um, so those guys, even with Bo, I, I don't, I, I, could, I don't have to talk to Bo. I don't have to talk to Ben. Right. But it's like if they send me they know what it I send is. them, it's a pickup just like that. You know, it's yeah. a text back like that. And um, so, you know, for me, it, it, it was always fun and exciting um, to do it in Orlando. Uh, right. I never, I, you know, I I looked at Latero Green, the guy who, the way he guarded me that, that first time ever being in uh NBA basketball game, summer league game, and the way he guarded me and who he was playing for. And then all of a sudden, look where I'm at. I'm playing with <laughs> playing with Orlando with this guy who did me the way he did me. Right. Uh, you know, he was stronger than me. And uh, but you know, for me, I like I was saying, I just a lot of things just happen the, the strangest way. But um uh, for me, I've just been blessed to continue to be by the game, stay by the game. I, one of my daughters, my older daughter, played college basketball, uh, okay, uh, high school basketball. And then now my son, uh, he's playing at uh, Odessa Junior College uh, okay. this past year. Uh, and, and then, you know, I got a younger son who's going to be playing the, 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 the game that I, I love even more. It's oh, football. yeah? And I love, I, and, and every day, but I love <laughs> basketball. I love basketball. But football right. is my first love. Mm-hmm. So he, I got a son who's playing the uh, same position I played in high school, wide receiver. Okay. Uh, he can't. He can't kick like his daddy. So I got to up him. <laughs> I, I can catch. I can catch like him. But he yeah. yeah. So, but I mean, it's it's been exciting that you know the route and the, the way I got here. Um, it always taught me how to work. You know, my body is toe up. I'm not going. Yeah. I mean, I got injuries from when I played bone spurs that I need to get off my body. But you know, at yeah. the end of the day, uh, 
I'm, I still appreciate the work that I I have done and I got to and the places I've been and uh, the journey that has taken me where I'm at now and continue to take me even other places and further. So uh, yeah, I man. can't complain. I, I, thank, I thank the basketball gods and, <laughs> and, and, and probably um, – I always thank the Orlando Magic fans. Yeah. They 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 had to accept me. And they did. That's beautiful, bro. I wanted to ask, how did you get into coaching, man? Like what what made you want to want to get into coaching and then ultimately, you know, like you could have gone any other route. Like what made you want to uh, get into coaching? Well, I mean, a lot of my coaches said keep your material. You're gonna mm -hmm. probably be a coach one day. Okay. Like I say, I, I stepped into this leadership role without even knowing I was being yeah. a leader. You know what I'm saying? When Penny left and I became the leader and not even knowing I was going to be become the leader. And and then I remember Byron Scott when I played for him at New Orleans right before a couple a couple of weeks before I got traded. He was like, yo, make sure you keep all your material because you're gonna be a coach. Yeah. And uh for me, that's that's what I've that's that's what I've done and it's been fun to be around the game. I I don't really care about being no head coach or I don't care about sitting on the front row. It's yeah. about connecting with those players and, and making them better and find ways to engage these guys to, you know, go to this next level that they need to go to. And that that's fun. That's exciting for me enough. And that's all I try to do. Um, you know, the first player I they they ever gave me was JJ Barrero when I got here at the Dallas Mavericks. Oh my god, you did a great job with him, bro. <laughs> he reminded me just like you. Matter of fact, he, rem <laughs> he reminded me just like he you. could score way better than me. He could score. <laughs> um, but you know, oh it, it was fun. It was fun. I'm never gonna forget um, when I first, because I, I I was trying to play my 15th year. I decided to retire right before Christmas, two days before Christmas. Okay. I, I, I basically retired in a workout in Phoenix. Um, the season had started, and they brought six guys in. Troy mm -hmm. Hudson, who used to play for Orlando, was yeah, there. Sure, David yeah. Stoudemire was there. Yep. Uh, they gave it to the kid named D. Brown, who uh, picked, who got it. But mm -hmm. I basically re I retired in that workout. My body just couldn't do it no more. Yeah. And because um, Shaq was with uh, Phoenix at that time, he yeah. came in like, "Yo, let's go, D. A. Shaq, they don't work. Yeah, <laughs> my body done shut down. <laughs> and, um, but you know, you know, so." For me, you know, once that happened, uh, I decided to retire. And then I got a call from Dallas to come coach with them wow. a week later, which is unusual for somebody to join the staff in the middle of the year. Yeah. And um, the first first person they gave me, and the only person they gave me was J.J. Barrera. And i never forget, uh, they gave me his shooting time, and they said, uh, you shoot with J.J. today. And so I come downstairs. J.J. was downstairs already. And I said, JJ, they got me shooting with you. He, uh, he, uh, he said, and I ain't gonna never forget this. He said, he said, whatever you say, let's go. And, uh, <laughs> and he said, whatever you say, let's let's go. I'm that's busy. a winning attitude, right there, yeah. man. And 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 that's the attitude. It's easy to do it when you when you got an attitude. That that just put me back in my shoes, where you know he, this is the type of guy I was. You know, mm. hey, you know, whatever you say, let's go. I'm gonna listen. Let's go. I'm want to get better, and mm -hmm. he got he got so much better. Especially when you, when you get more playing time, um, he just knows how to play. He knew how to yeah. score. They, they, over there, they say he used to call him the Puerto Rican AI. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he can get he can get some buckets. But, he can get uh, some buckets. You know, yeah. you know he was special. I mean, he won a championship. You know, here with Dallas, and you know, it was very special for him. And so. Um, when you get guys uh, that also know that you played in the game, you played in the league, and it's easy sometimes to go out there and, and coach them. And, you know, the respect factor that I, once I retired that I got from all the players was, was special to me because then it, it showed me that, you know what, I, I, I played the game the right way. I did the right things. And when you get respect from other guys when you finish, uh, it's special. It, yeah. It's very special because that doesn't happen all the time. Got you, man. Like I said, I'm going to hold you too long, man. I probably got maybe about three more questions. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Okay. Good. Yeah, man. I, so for, for the Mavericks fans out there, we got a few, we got a, uh, one of uh, 
somebody in that group is a huge Mavericks man, man. Um, what can we expect for them next season? So he was, um, he's really excited. Obviously, he's a huge Luca fan. I am as well. Um, the world. All is. The, I mean, uh, bro, bro, he is incredible. Like, like just. It's just it's just watching him on TV. Like obviously I don't know, dude. It just seems like he's an instant bucket getter. Like it, his just his scoring it just seems like it's elite. His biggest concern is just I guess the help around him. And I think it's like mainstream media they putting all this junk in the people's heads about um, do they have enough around Luca, man? Like what is your opinion on that? Yeah, well, I mean we got enough around Luca. You know, yeah. we got enough. It's just. You know, sometimes it's about sharing the wealth, you know. Um, yeah. you know at, at the same time, Luca, Luca will have to be in as much as the other players have to be in, you know. Yeah. Uh, um, so, you know, for for Luca, he, he understands and knows, excuse me, and knows the game. Mm-hmm. The one thing I learned about Luca when I, we first got here, uh, when he first got here, was um, – he, he, he played the game. He started playing professional at, basically at age 13. He played for real maturity at age 13. The maturity was already there. It was growing from there. Um, you know, and, and I asked him, I said, Lucas, did your mom, your dad come over there? He's like, no. Right, just by himself, him. Just yeah. by himself. You know, I said, what did you do? You know, you know, stay in my room, watch TV or play, you know, the game. I only got with the guys every once in a while, but 13 right. years old. I mean, wow. I learned I learned a lot of things uh, overseas. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of guys are more mature than our guys, our younger guys. Because, yeah. you know, for me, when I went over in Cyprus and played my first year, we had guys that was uh, had to go to the army. I played guys who were sixteen years old, fifteen, sixteen years old. But every mm-hmm. Wednesday, had to, they had to go to the army and check in and report that day. So it's a it's a different type of maturity for those guys when you're doing that. It's not you they going on Wednesday to go play PlayStation. No, they going into serious <laughs> stuff. Right. That, that, you know, just imagine if, if half our kids would do that. Hell, they'd probably run away from home. I know. <laughs> Literally. You know, yeah. it's hard to say. You know, you know, oh, I'm not going to the army, no. You know, so, you know, but that's the maturity of uh, some of the athletes over there that that the things that they have to go through early in their the younger years. And, uh, and when he, when I saw him, I was like, man, this boy can play. That's the first thing I said. He can play. We just got to work on him not walking. You know, he, yeah. anytime he had a live dribble, he had that European. Oh, movie. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I used, yep. to, I, used to, I used to play pickup with him sometime when he first got here. And I used to say, hey, man, you can count the bucket, but you walk. No, I didn't walk. I didn't walk. No, I didn't walk. I didn't walk. I said, no, I didn't walk. Did they call that in games on him at some time? Once again, that's what I'm about to say. So we got in the preseason, yeah. uh, preseason game. <laughs> <laughs> right. you like, see, I told you. And I, I'll just be sitting on it like this. <laughs> you still walking. <laughs> but I'm um, a very yeah. special talent. Uh, probably a more even better person, uh, yeah. you know. Um, you know, we had we one thing about the Dallas Mavericks organization that I could say about their players. We are, in, you know, since I've been playing here and then as coach, we always have some good character guys, mm-hmm. uh, good talented character guys as well. Uh, so I get that up to Mark Cuban and the yeah. organization. That's what's up, man. And then my last question for me, man, was, I mean, as we talked about a little bit about errors before we even hopped on and started recording, man, Mm -hmm. like, what is your opinion? A lot of these people, they're trying to do this whole LeBron, Jordan, who's the best? No, 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 it's not even a comparison. (laughs) I've been told people, man, it's not. It's It's, not. It's 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 sad. It's it's. It's I sad. don't like it, man. I don't like it's it. It's sad that they, they, they see an era with LeBron, and LeBron is good. I'm not Yeah, kidding. that's what I'm I, saying. He's good. Um, but, you know, he's <laughs> it, it, not Michael. It's disrespectful, uh, man. I, I I just think – I'm sorry to cut you off. No, you're, but you're good. It's just disrespectful because the thing is I'm not even – I'm, 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 I'm 29 years old, right? Mm-hmm. So for me, for me, you're thinking like, oh, he's just LeBron. Like, you know, he ain't never seen, like, I know. I watch film. 
Like I've seen like the wars, like you played in that era, man. Like you could put your hands on people. Like you could yeah. put, you know what I mean? Like you had yeah, to. LeBron, nah, LeBron could play in that era. He still could play in that era too. You think so? Yeah, because he's bigger. I mean, yeah. you are just, you are just. Okay. Here. So LeBron is talented. But yeah. the thing is, you know, uh, he's playing in an era where you can't touch nobody. Right. Go ahead. I don't mean to cut you off. Go ahead, finish. No, I was just going to say, I mean, you can literally score like 20 points from the free throw line. You know what yeah. I mean? These guys, the way they draw fouls, they look for calls, the flopping. It's just ridiculous. I just don't like that part of the NBA. That's my only thing I don't like about basketball now. It's just the flopping and then the, you know. I told you. Dwayne Wade in the NBA Finals, 22 or 24 from the free throw line. <laughs> yeah, man. It's crazy to me. You know but, what I mean? Yeah, but it's it's uh, everybody that everybody goes on what they see today. They don't know they don't know how hard Mike had to work for his first three championships. Work mm -hmm. and not leave. Yeah. That's the thing. He had to work and go through Boston, Larry Bird, Detroit, uh, New York, Patrick Ewan, Detroit, Isaiah Thomas and and the bad boys. Yeah. And that, and they came off two championships when right. they finally got through. Uh Indiana, <laughs> the Davis boys, Reggie Miller. Um, yeah, you know, so you know these, you know, MJ, MJ had to work, man, and it, but it that those 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 the you know those the games and and the things that showed me how the how the, how to play the game, mm -hmm. uh, what what to do with the game. When I I used to see him, you know, going at it with Detroit, yeah. and coming up short, <laughs> but but not saying I'm gonna go join three other All Stars. Right. That means that that that's a that's a lot, man. I mean, that's that's telling right there. Like I said, I'm all for that, you know. But I'm just guys. I just don't even like the super team thing. It, it's just too much for me, man. You know, I just never. I never. They, if you call yourself the king, I ain't never seen no king leave the throne. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? So but it's like king, they crowned. This king. This king went left his throne. And went to. He want to get on the beach, at South Beach. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, all over the place, man. So, like I said, I, oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was, I was just saying for me, like, you know, because they, they want me to record this episode about why I debate guys with LeBron and, mm -hmm. and Jordan. I told them, I can't do that, bro. There's there's no way. It's, My, it's, it's, it's no. It's there's no, no way. There's people no need, comparing them. People need to stop. Um, they need to stop that. I mean, M MJ showed the world he was the greatest. Um, he finally got past Detroit, and 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 then that the, the nice thing about it was basketball was yo I you know Oof. yeah I don't, I don't I don't really like you man yeah that's what hey you know I, that's I, what I, I like I, competitive I, I, competitive I, yeah I, I finally when Isaiah and them won let when Jordan won and they had to get a torch up they walked off the floor right yeah and walk not only walked off but walked right past them. yeah. <laughs> And that still is bitter to this day to because a lot of, of that. guys. Yeah. But that was basketball. It was That's fun. basketball. It was exciting. I know, know, bro. It wasn't none of that fake fight. No, you, 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 you put your hands up, you about to get punched. It wasn't none of that pushing stuff. No. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, what you yeah. doing? So, but this is the most special thing. I'm going to leave you with this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave you with this. So after he won his first three championships, he leaves the game because his dad passing, yeah. um, and he goes play baseball, and he comes back. The mm -hmm. year he comes back, I come into the <laughs> NBA. <laughs> we played him second round, second round of the uh, NBA playoffs. Yeah, and. Um, <laughs> That's when Nick Anderson in game one stole the ball from him. He's wearing number 45. Yeah. Stole the ball, bounced it to, guess who? Horace Grant first year with us. Uh -huh. He left Chicago and bounced it to Horace Grant, and he dunks it. We win game one. Damn. Game two, I said, oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> game two, he kept his top on. Dude, oh, yeah. <laughs> so they, had, they announced him in game two. 
yeah. ran number 45 for the University of North Carolina, Michael Jordan. You know, he, we in Orlando. He's still getting his applause. From right. Him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to have to look around. Are we at home? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So all of a sudden, something say, and I was a big Michael Jordan fan. Yeah. I loved him at University of, of North Carolina. I used to watch the blue and white game. They show it on TV. Yep. And um, so I was like, watch the dude. He come out and he pops off his top. He got 23 on us. <laughs> You in trouble now. We are in trouble. Oh, no, Superman is back. You know? <laughs> so they they get up winning that game. They won game two. Okay. So we go we go back. We, we end up winning. Make a long story short, we end up winning four to two, and we won on the floor. We pick up hard, yeah. Greg, and waving his towel. Yeah. Yeah. The first year leaving us, Chicago, <laughs> waving his towel. <laughs> Man, that's the year we went to the NBA Finals. We come back next year. They got Dennis Rodman, uh-huh. <laughs> and we play him in the conference finals. Yeah. Oh my God! I was like, he goes. <laughs> this way he goes on his next three years of winning the NBA Finals. Special, right? But the, in the first one, he won. The next year, they come back. We um we play him in the conference finals. This is the year Shaq last year. He leading. Mm-hmm. We had a couple of injuries. A couple of guys didn't play. Game four, they sweep us. Okay. And why they doing it during the game in the fourth quarter? You can see it, the conversation between Scotty, Michael Jordan, and Horace Grant. What's and all saying? you can see is Horace Grant. <laughs> he's, just, he's on his knees like this, and he yeah. got his head down, and he's smiling and laughing because they are talking <laughs> shit to him. <laughs> <laughs> and all he could do was just like, yeah. do this right here. So at the end of the game, I never forget, at the end of the game, Jordan hit one free throw and missed one on purpose. Mm-hmm. And we were like, what are you doing? Right, yeah. So you can go look at the stat sheet. <laughs> he left 45 on the scoreboard. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> look, up, look up the stats on that game. Game four, look up the stats on that game. Man. Wow. My man. 19, my 1994, <laughs> 95. That was 95 years. It would be 95, 96. 96, look up that stack sheet. Game oh four, conference final. Wow. And you'll see it got 45. <laughs> <laughs> Letting them know. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. And he goes on to win the next three championships. And they and the make it so special. The last dance really made it so special where we could see he was pushed out. Right, he yeah. He was pushed out. Uh, Scotty was pushed out. All those guys was pushed out. Yeah. Phil, Phil Jackson was pushed out. Right. And still, to they tell these guys, this is y'all last go rock. And still, the stuff that they went through, you know, yeah. that last year to win a championship, yeah. it just shows you that what type of champions they are. Yeah. Six for six. Hey, MJ is special, <laughs> man. You don't, you don't find it. I wish I could have watched and being around and seeing Bill Russell, Bill right. Russell win 11. That's yeah. special to me. I, yeah. I had a chance to see Kobe win five. Yeah. And he lost one. Still yeah. special because he done it at the same place, same spot that right. he was at. Um, those are special times. Detroit. That means something. Look, yeah. look, look, look at that, Detroit. Look at, um, you know, guys who lost championship, you know, Charles Barkley twice. With um, Phoenix, uh, yeah. Carl Malone and John Stockton with Utah, but those guys stuck with their team. That's what Richard I'm saying. Miller man. Stuck with his team. Yeah, yeah. He got to the finals, but stuck with his team, and that was exactly that was some beautiful basketball because they wanted to beat each other and they were right. competitive. I know, I know, man. And, and you can't ask. That's that's so special. Um, but today, today's they want to join hand. And, I don't like uh, it, bro. You know. Hey yeah. man, come on down here, man. We got some, uh, we got some uh, oranges for you down here. In South <laughs> right? You know what I mean? It's it's just incredible to me. Like it's it's just like I said, I I, I can't say it's they're soft, but from a mentality point, it's just super soft to me. Like they, come on, mentally, bro. mentally, they 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 mentally soft to me. Yeah. The. That era before I even got into basketball, into the NBA, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. it, it taught me the, the mental side 
the mental toughness side of what these guys had to go through. Right. I thank God I, I grew up on the Detroit Pistons, Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. Bulls, Larry Bird, Celtics, Dale Davis, Reggie mm -hmm. Miller, Indiana Pacers, New York Knicks, John Stockton, uh, Patrick Ewing, all those guys. And that was some good basketball. basketball. Yeah, that was great basketball, man. When we watched the playoff game, that was some good basketball. Yeah. And, and I thank God that I grew up on watching those guys uh, because they, they, they taught you how to be mental tough. They, they, they taught you that you can't break. Because it was physical, you knew it was physical. It was hand checking. It was forearm, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, you know, it was just fun to watch. And even when I played my first playoff game ever against Tim Holloway Jr. I mean Tim Holloway, mm -hmm. uh, it was forearm, hand check. You can do all yeah. of that. But he was an all star. Lonzo Mourning, and but it taught it, it taught me that the mental side, and I was ready for it. Right. Uh, I knew Tim was tough. You know what I'm saying? I knew Miami was tough. Pat Riley's team was tough. Oh, yeah. So it, it, it taught me, the, all right, yo, this ain't no joke. You got to be ready to go. Mentally, here it is. Here it come. Let's go. And and I thank God that I was raised on basketball like that coming up because now everybody wants to join hands and, I know. you know, be friends. And it, it ain't nothing wrong with being friends. It, right. It, at, at the end of the day, you know, you you are you will gain respect from another opponent because the way you played the game, Thank how you. hard you played it, and you are you are, you'll be friends. Michael Jordan and uh, Dumas, they became yeah. real good friends, right? You know, because right. right. MJ knew how hard he played, he knew how hard MJ played, right? And you know, they they didn't give in to each other; they they played. So yeah. that was that was a fun time for me to watch basketball. Um, I, the game is still. A beautiful game. We still have beautiful talent in this league, and um, you know sometimes I don't blame the players sometimes mm -hmm. um, because a lot of time the NBA changed the rules to make the game different, make the game score and higher. So right. you, know, you can't always blame the players, but the players do have a lot to do with it. Yeah, they join their hands and things like that. But thank God I, I grew up in an era where, excuse me. It was tough. I grew yeah. up with I, I, James Worthy. I watched James Worthy, Magic Johnson. Then I watched the Boston Celtics. Then play, and I mean, I, I grew up in the era where it was tape delayed. <laughs> <laughs> the NBA wow, it was tape delayed. Oh my gosh, bro! <laughs> so, you yeah, know, you man. already knew what happened, but yeah, okay, and we watched this game. I still sat there and watched it, but uh, those was the days, and. Uh, you know, it, uh, you know, it's the same thing with life. We all got to make an adjustment. Uh, it is what it is, but we still do have a beautiful game that we can watch. And the playoffs was, was fun to watch this year as well. So oh, yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah, man. All right, man. Like I said, we're, we're going to let you get out of here. Daryl Armstrong, uh, everybody, man. Um, appreciate you coming on the show, bro. Like I said, best of luck to you, man. You're a beautiful person, man. Um wishing you all the best with this season man i'm really rooting for you guys you see i got the hat on man i don't i don't got i, I don't i got i got the hat on for a reason man like i said i'm rooting for you guys like i thought that know. was the minnesota timberwolves uh, nah this is nah, the dallas mavericks baby you know what i mean okay. like I, this was, there's only two basketball teams that i really rock with okay because i don't i don't really have a team i usually right. like players right mm -hmm. like i'm telling you my favorite players in the nba is luka Doncic and bead and Giannis, yep. those are my guys, and, and Kevin Durant. But th those are my guys, man. Yeah. So, but like I said, I'm really rooting for you guys, man. And um, appreciate you know, like I said, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna let you go and get out of here. Is anybody want to show? We nah, just we appreciate you, effort, energy, leadership. That's how I remember your career, yeah, man. Thank you, man. Beautiful, I man. Yeah, thanks for giving it to us. That's the effect I, I, I was hoping that I left on fans around the world and also in Orlando. Just the effort. And the energy that I brought, that way they say, "Hey man, when they when they when they walk up to me, they see me outside. Hey, thank you for the way you play the game. That's yeah. that's always yeah. a compliment for me uh, from a fan. I love to hear them say that. Yeah, man, you played the you played the game the right way, man. You know, that, so man. thank you. But uh, hey, everybody, that concludes our show. Daryl Armstrong. All right, so 
continue to support the Dallas Mavericks and Daryl. Um, like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next show. Peace. Thank you, fellas. Thank you. No